This is again a, a very short intro on how you use state machine diagrams in Papyrus and I assume that the people who watch this are more or less familiar with how state machines look like. Um, also this will be on a rather high level so I won't go into the details of for example specifying uh, constraints and guards for different transitions and other more advanced syntax elements. Um, mm -hmm. So I've, I've created a package here again in my model to uh, basically store all my state machine related things. Of course, you could also, for example, create a state machine for an interface, a protocol state machine or something like that. Uh, in this case, I just put everything here uh, and I start by creating a new state machine diagram. Generally, I find state machine diagrams uh, are one of the easiest things in Papyrus to model. Um, there are not too many surprises, there are not too many syntax elements to start with. Um, and so this is rather doable, I think. First of all, you have, uh, you, when you create a state machine diagram, you get one state machine um, created for yourself. Uh, you could, of course, also manually create a state machine and then under it a state machine diagram. Um, and as you see in the model on the left hand side, uh, every state machine automatically has one region. You can add additional regions if you want to do uh, some kind of sequential uh, process, which we don't do here for now. Um, we start with an initial node and I mean according to UML you can only have one, uh, but this is not really checked on this level, so I can add more than one. I think the validation should capture this. Um, yeah, so this is invalid, and then if I revalidate this, it probably works. Good. Drawing states is also straightforward, and naming them, um, and also transitions between elements in the state machine diagram are pretty straightforward, um, and we can have a final state, and then we have something that's actually valid. Um, so this is sort of the, the very basic uh, way. Shallow and deep history work exactly as the initial nodes, so I could have uh, within my state machine here, I'm not sure this works, yeah this actually works directly, so I could make a composite state out of this, um, and then within here define the internal behavior. Similarly, you can have uh, regions in a composite state, so I could say I um, want a state that has two regions where we have some kind of parallel behavior and also this is not a big surprise. Um, and then you could use different elements here, for example, the terminate to uh, demonstrate that you want to exit the state as soon as one of the regions finishes. So this is all uh, rather basic, it's very easy to draw um, and it works similarly with, with elements like cho uh, choice and junction. Uh, you can draw an entry points for states so you could say that you have different entry points um, similarly for exit points I won't show this here. Um, fork and, and join are a little bit more, well, they're not difficult, but you need to understand what they do because uh, fork and join basically require that you have orthogonal regions. So you can't, uh, syntactically, you shouldn't be able to fork into two states in the same, uh, in the same region. So I can, of course, do this, but this is not... Uh, this is not really a valid behavior. So maybe this is captured by um, by my validation. No, it's not. Well, so you can draw it. It's syntactically wrong. Um, but this is how it works. So ideally that the fork, of course, should go into different regions. So for example, I could have my fork here. basically showing that I enter the two regions.
and then hopefully also have a join again in the end. Um, now, let's remove this because it doesn't really look that nice. Uh, so I go back to my initial state. So far I've just drawn stuff, but maybe we also want to have some kind of logic here, some kind of guards, triggers, uh, effects on the transitions or behavior in the states. Um, and there are different ways to do this. So if you click on a transition, for example, you'll see that uh, in my properties you have a name, you, have, you can define whether it's external, internal, local transitions, uh, and then you have the three things that you can define. You have a trigger, you have a guard, and you have an effect. Um, and this is, sadly, I find this very complicated in, in UML to define these, and I also often find it rather pointless unless you have something that you generate code from or that you can execute directly. So what I quite often do, uh, if I do state machines on the level, is just for communication, for readability, is that I just define trigger, guard, and effect in the name because this is what's being displayed. So I can just say, uh, I can have an event here, I can say event one at a certain guard condition x is larger five uh, and add a trigger uh, an effect for example trigger event two and this is exactly what will be shown here if you want to do this with all the uh, all the formal elements this is much more complicated but of course there might be cases where this is important for example code generation that and then of course you can define uh, for example, a new trigger where I can say, okay, I want a certain event and I don't have one here, so I just I can add one, for example, a call event, um, which basically leads me to a dialogue creating this in my model somewhere. Um, but this is, I think, rather difficult, so I can say, um, and then finally refer to a certain operation that I have somewhere. Um, and now I've actually defined an event for a specific trigger. Um, but I think, yeah, I usually don't do that because it's complicated. Again, if you have a use case for that, it of course makes more sense. Similarly for the states, uh, you can define an invariant, you can find do submachines, of course, uh, and entry and exit. And of course, do entry and exit are, are the behaviors that you can define. So there you can add all sorts of different things. So you can point to an interaction. You could have this in a sequence diagram, for example. Uh, you could point to a protocol state machine or another state machine, or for example, to an activity. Uh, and then again, you get to a dialogue where you have to define everything. Um, and I could for example, again, you use one of my methods and say this is the activity I'm doing here. But what's being displayed is again the name, so you could give them, you could just more or less define in prose what is happening here. Um, again, depends on the use case, but this is definitely the quickest and the most straightforward way unless you have a finished model where everything is defined already. Um, and this is about as much as I will talk about these diagrams here. Um, but as I said, I think they're pretty easy to sketch, pretty quick to sketch, unless you make them very complex with a lot of nested uh, submachines and or orthogonal regions or so on.